the City of Waterloo, in cooperation with its many active and inspiring entities, presents Heart for the City, a chance to hear and see what's going on in our city and to meet people who serve you, teach you, entertain you, help you, all neighbors and like you. Make this a city on the move. And now, here's our host, the Honorable Quinton Hart. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Heart for the City. I'm Quentin Hart, proud mayor of Waterloo. And my special thanks go to Reverend Abraham Funches, Jr. for filling in as a host on our last show. And he did, as you viewers all agree, a great job. And those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Winston Churchill Wright. No, the quote is most likely due to writer and philosopher George Centeniana, and it's the original form of the way it was read, and it said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And there is certainly much evidence that this statement rings true. As such, it makes a good case of why local museums are so important. And Waterloo is rich in museums, historical societies, and libraries. And many pass off these institutions as housing relics of a bygone age uh, when we were little or, or, or little used today. But I would most strongly disagree. Waterloo is unique. If not, we would all be living in identical bedroom communities with names like Generic Hills or Hearts Manor. Maybe not, or, or local museums and historical societies showcase what puts Waterloo uniquely on the map. And libraries and museums have changed as technology has grown. There's interactive exhibits, and they have replicated static displays. And the focus on science and technology, art and music, and the history of any of the multitude of cultures in our community is inspirational. And one of our high quality museums, the Grout Museum District, houses a plethora of historic facts, documents, and displays highlighting our history and the diversity that is unique to Waterloo. And who has a hand on all this material? Stay tuned for the answer to that question as we reveal the secrets of the museum. Getting healthy has never been easier with a membership at Cedar Valley Sportsplex. Offering 80 free classes a week at all skill levels, there's always new and fun opportunities to grow. You never have to miss out on your favorites with our state-of-the-art facilities, featuring great exercise equipment, a track and field, pool, and two regulation gyms. So whether your game is football or pickleball, let the Cedar Valley Sportsplex turn your routine into something amazing. Welcome back. The Grout Museum of History and Science features permanent and continually changing exhibitions of area history, regional flora and fauna, plants or animals, you learned something today, <laughs> and the only public planetarium in Northeast Iowa which hosts weekly shows. It's also home to Northeast Iowa's largest genealogical reference library and it contains an archival collection numbering uh, 21,000 maps, photographs, oral histories, audio videotapes, clippings, and documents relating to the Cedar Valley. What else, what else is there? To tell us about this treasure trove of items is Nick Erickson, the museum's registrar. So welcome, Nick, to Heart for the City. Thank you. All right, so tell us a little bit about your background and, and what is a registrar? A registrar is in charge of the governing body of legal documents that protect and support the museum's collection. In addition to that, I do what uh, might be termed uh, collections management work, where I'm in charge of uh, the well-being and security uh, and all the research and uh, provenance of the object collection mm. at the museum. Oh, wow. So... Uh, you collect and just make sure everything is where it needs to be, how it needs to be handled, and that's a, that's actually a very important job when we're when we're talking about overall history. But but with, with so many, I think I think it was I said twenty one thousand. But how do you sort? How do you preserve and catalog items? 
Well, luckily, there's a national standard for that. Okay. So just like in biology... It's not Dewey the, Decimal? <laughs> no, no. Well, actually, there, there is a library at the museum, and the stuff under that, uh, under that authority is filed in a similar fashion to that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. But just like in biology, you have a taxonomic system with kingdom, phylum, genus, class. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, the Linnaeus system. Right. There's a system in uh, museums for man-made objects called the Chennault system for the classification of man-made objects. Mm -hmm and things are filed and cataloged according to that system. It's the same in every museum in the country. And that's where everything is kept or different locations or? We have three main storerooms mm -hmm. and they're stored according to category and, and we use that system. Uh, the, the paperwork is also filed according to that system in a separate location. And, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna read, I'm gonna read this though because uh, you, you are already famous prior to you being on this show which is going to make you, elevate you to an even greater level of being famous and, and a TV sensation. <laughs> Glad to hear it. But, Thank you. But you have been, have been featured in several Iowa public television time travel Iowa segments. Uh, tell us about this experience. I think one is an example of the, the Herrick Ice Refrigerator. That's right, yeah. So a couple of producers came from IPTV. Uh, I walked them around the museum and the storerooms. I work so uh, closely with the collection that sometimes I forget what's interesting and, and <laughs> what isn't, and it, it's, all, uh, it's all my responsibility, so I treat them all equally, uh, all the artifacts with equal importance. But they picked out a few things that they knew were going to be interesting to their audience, and all I had to do was uh, research and then answer their questions about those items. Wow. And one was a Herrick Ice Refrigerator. We did another one on the, uh, the surveyor tools for uh, Charles Mullen, an oh, early wow. settler in the area. He okay. actually platted... Uh, Waterloo. So all the roads we use and stuff were laid out by him in about 1858. Mullen, Mullen Street, huh? Mm. And, and how can people donate artifacts? Because I assume people bring those things to you, but how can people donate? Right. Uh, so uh, we operate 100% on donations. The mm -hmm. museum doesn't purchase anything. So if you have something you'd like to donate, just give us a call or uh, email us and we'll take care of the rest. So I, I have an old picture of myself. Okay. Um, and I, I know I can't just give that to you. There has to be some criteria and different things that you sure. utilize. What are those? So my, my executive producer, William, and myself won't send you over our high school pictures. Sure. Well, there are four main criteria we use. All right. The first is condition. Is it in good shape? Is your photo rotting? Okay. Because if it is, if it's got mold on it, we can't introduce it into the collection alongside all the other things we're trying to preserve. It's okay. too much of a risk. The second is redundancy. Do we already have a picture of you uh, that's virtually the same picture? Well, we don't need two. Right. <laughs> right. The third is, does it fit our mission? Well, are you from Waterloo? I am. It fits our mission. Very good. All right. Yeah. And then the last is, um, <laughs> can we care for it? Right. <laughs> Do we have the proper facilities? See, when folks donate stuff to us, we have to be able to guarantee them right. that we can preserve it. Okay. If we can't, then we're in breach of the public trust. And, and who makes the, who makes the decision? You have a uh, yourself or a group? There's a committee. Okay. So it's myself. I chair it. The archivist, a few other staff members, some community members, and uh, a board member. And and what items best support the mission um, of the museum? That we have in collections already. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got the water lily, which is one of Waterloo's first uh, fire engines. Oh wow. Hand pumped actually. Okay. Uh, we have a Maytag Mason Roadster from about 1950 mm. that beat a locomotive in a race in the city centennial in 1954. We have a Galloway built uh, uh, Dart pickup truck. I'm just listing vehicles now. I should switch to something oh, no, else. Oh, that's fine. We have Waterloo's first post office, which is mm. nothing more than a, a chest of drawers that sat on Charles Mullen's front porch. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And, 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 are, are there items like that, or what are, you, what are you interested in? So if someone is listening or watching right now, mm -hmm. and they may have something that you may be looking for, but what items would you, would you be looking for as well? Okay. We're a district of five museums, mm -hmm. Science Museum, two Victorian homes, local history museum, Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum. Mm -hmm. The local history museum is looking for domestic items owned by residents of this area, this okay. Waterloo and the Cedar Valley, right? Yeah. And uh, the Veterans Museum collects the personal effects of Iowa veterans statewide. Okay. So uh, that's the general rule of thumb. And, and when can you use a uh, family history or genealogy as a uh, donation uh, for an important to pass history? Uh, 
you would donate um, a genealogy or, or whatever you've compiled uh, with uh, us basically the same way you would any other object, artifact, okay. or, or archival piece. And can anyone access the collections? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Anybody can. Uh, for uh, uh, academic-based research or mm -hmm. just personal edification. You just okay. have to make an appointment first. Okay. And you uh, recently hosted a, um, a, um, uh, an exhibit. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. Or one of, but the, from, from Bach to Rock. <laughs> yeah, music in the Cedar Valley, right. absolutely. We took a look at uh, the cultural history of this area through the music, right? Mm -hmm. So you go way back, we started in uh, around the 1870s. That's sort of when we, we started in the, the second half of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And uh, when all these folks came from all over to settle the area, mm -hmm. they brought their musical instruments oh with gosh, them. And wow. So by tracking music, we can see... Uh, we can see uh, Czech influence, German, uh, Slovenian, Greek, and then moving toward uh, a little bit forward into the 20th century, we have uh, we have the Holmes County, uh, Mississippi story, oh right? God. We have uh, uh, later uh, other immigrant groups, and uh, you can you can look at the history, mm -hmm. the cultural diversity right. uh, by looking at uh, Man, that, instruments. That, that just seems it's like overwhelming because. You know, what, what does it take to get all these items together? I'm like, wow. Our uh, instrument collection, our musical collection in mm -hmm. general, it's not just instruments, uh, but there, there are records and right. stuff. It, it was sort of an older collection, right? We've gotten a few musical instruments in the past few mm -hmm. years, but most of it was donated about 50 Fifty years oh ago or gosh, so, people wow. were getting rid of their grandparents' okay. grandparents' music and musical instruments, right? And so it took a lot of uh, a lot of digging, a mm -hmm. lot of going through some of the older wow. records, the pre-digital records, right. and then uh, stabilizing a lot of the artifacts, okay. right? Okay. These are usually these are, are handcrafted wooden artifacts, thin wooden walls, and they a lot of them had dried out over mm -hmm. the over the past half century or so. Well, well, I'm in, I'm impressed because you know, of course, I've been to the Sullivans, I've done all those things, but to actually hear about what it takes, the, the upkeep, the science that's involved in all of this. I'm, I'm absolutely impressed. So, um, Nick, you, you, you certainly have a challenging, challenging but most rewarding job. And each of us can be thankful not only for the museum and its great collections and displays, but all the knowledge, dedication, and hard work that you personally provide. And we hope that you will be able to return in the future to tell us more of the fascinating story of what the museum has to offer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Museums ensure understanding and appreciation for various groups and cultures. They promote better understanding of our collective heritage and foster dialogue, curiosity, and self-reflection. Further, they serve to help future generations comprehend their history and recognize their achieve the achievements of those who came before them. Museums are charged with conserving, protecting, and displaying artifacts from our past and thus preserving our rich heritage, which might otherwise be lost to private collections or to time itself. So quite simply, without museums, we would most certainly lose the tangible links to our past. Moving on, the Corporation for National and Community Services volunteering improves psychological and physical health. Volunteers reap the benefits of feeling a personal sense of accomplishment while building social networks that in turn support them in times of stress. And this year, as in some past years, there is a unique opportunity to volunteer. And what is it? More to come after this. A great college education is all about the connections you make, connecting with classmates, with new ideas, and with new technology. At Hawkeye Community College, you're more than just a student. You're part of a small community learning the skills and teamwork you'll need to succeed in your chosen career. You've always dreamed of a better career, a higher salary, and a better life. The connections you make at Hawkeye can bring those dreams into focus. Hawkeye Community College, connect. Welcome back. Potholes are caused when water penetrates cracks in the road that are made worse by traffic load. And when this water freezes, it expands, widening the cracks. These holes can be a nightmare for a road user, and this year's harsh record winters have made these road hazards even more abundant than usual. How can we deal with this? 
Here with one solution is Scott Jordan, local business owner of Scott's Electric, <clears throat> who has organized this year's volunteer effort to fill potholes. So welcome, Scott, to Heart for the City. Thank you, Mayor. I hey, appreciate it. Before we start talking about potholes, you, 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 you t tell us a little bit about 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 who you are. Okay, well, I sure will. Thanks for having me on here. I, I uh, born and raised in uh, Waterloo and been here a lifelong residence and uh, started the electrical business in 1980, went to West High and have been married with five children. Started uh, the the uh, political arena about 1992 mm -hmm. on city council with the mayor roof group and then uh, did that for 10 years and then took a year off and then went to the, the board of supervisors, did that for eight years and now I'm just uh, excited to help more of the community with, that I've grown up with. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a great initiative, and we, we're glad that you're stepping up uh, to make a difference. But how did, how did this work on potholes actually begin? Well, I did about uh, 19, uh, excuse me, 2011 we started. Uh, we, I should back up in 1993, we started a, Heart, a Heartland um, volunteer group, and mm -hmm. we sort of started with that with Kathy McCoy and Wayne McGee. And we um, did uh, stuff with, like smoke alarms and tree cleaning up and when we had the high winds of the, and the floods, there's a lot of damages and the city can't do it all. I mean, and so we thought there's some opportunities and then mm -hmm. the potholes, we all know how aggravating it can be as no city can keep up with it. And, it, it, and it, these potholes, these are just a real temporary fix and right. it's a lot of, a lot of, you know, so that, what we got started was just to something we could pitch into. Well, you know, I, I, I hit one the other day, and I, I called the mayor's office. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't get him out here to do something. So uh, it, it has been, it, it has just been uh, one of the most extreme years with potholes I've ever seen from, you know, record snowfalls uh, to, you know, one of the wettest Septembers we've had, yep. freezing yep. rain and stuff. It's just, it's just been a, a nightmare. But how often have you organized this effort? This will be our sixth year sixth. in total from there. We, we started the first year, it was 2011, and we, we just do it, uh, you know, paying on the winter. Like you said, you mentioned, it's, this winter has been extremely hard, so that's why we picked this one. And, and uh, you know, it just, uh, it just, you know, they're going to last very minimum, but it's a small, it's a relief for a small time at least. Right. You know, but. And, and so what, so, so you said it started back, uh, you organized through, you said the heart? The Heartland uh, volunteered back in 93. Okay, and that's where it started, and that was to try to help be able to maintain. But you did a number of other activities, but this one was to help with the streets and roads. Yes, right? yeah, you bet, you bet. No, it's something we can uh, do. We have the equipment, and we have uh, uh, you know, people want to be part of the community right. to help, and that's, yes, it gives them a little, uh, little uh, you know, a sense of uh, being part of the community, right. you know, give them back that way. Well, well one citizen at a time, so, yeah. you yeah. know, absolutely phenomenal. And one thing we know, um, have you observed how people drive when it comes to <laughs> potholes? I have, you know, there's just, because, you know, the problem now with the rain puts it, adds, you know, <coughs> problems to the whole issue, but they don't realize how deep it is. And they hit one, then they swerve naturally. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's, it's just a human reaction. And it's right. just... It's no fault of anyone. They just said uh, you bottom out your car, and you, you right. know, and people are swerving, you know, all around. But uh, and, and you know, I'm also thinking too. You know, as you're driving, um, and you're going a certain speed, and and maybe maybe the road is a little bit more slippery, yeah, yeah. and you go and you jam on the brakes. The person behind yeah, you jams yeah. on, so you can avoid it. So yeah. it is an absolute nightmare it is, uh, it trying is. to avoid avoid yeah. them as well. But um, how do you how do you fix how do you how do you what do you do to to fix the potholes? Well, what you normally do is try to clean it out first. Cause we always have a lot of people to do it. Like mm -hmm. you know when uh, when you know typical road crew guys will just have two. I mean that's all you could work. But so we take advantage of it. We have a we just broom it out mm -hmm. and then just try to get all the rocks out. And then we pile up the rocks that are loose and then we just fill and then we'll tamp it. And then basically, you know, that, that's what we'll do. We, we like to tamp it just to, it's pro probably uh, don't need it, but we have enough right. people and then it just does a little bit of, you know, uh, hopefully it lasts a little longer. Right. Right. And, and, you know, what's interesting, um, I had an opportunity to go out with our crews um, last year 
uh, just trying to make sure that I get out to each department sure, and, sure. and put on some boots and get out there and some support. <laughs> sure. So, sure. yeah, it, it's it's phenomenal, phenomenal um, what you're doing. But uh, how much does that cost? And are you able to use city trucks or you use your own? Or? Yeah, we just use our own trailers, you know, that way because we like to just use it to, uh, uh, to have it a free expense to the, any tax dollars because there, right. there's so many other things that you got, people can work on as well as you know. And like Aspro, they're donating it. Uh, the, the materials, we have the trailer. Can you get them to and, donate it to us? So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that a couple of times. We'll try. You know? <laughs> so he, uh, but he's very, steps up the plate and very, uh, very accommodating. And, and what, what measures, because safety is important, being out in the streets and doing that, what safety measures do you use? Yeah, no, very good point. Well, we do a few things. We have action signs, part of the ones that uh, are donating their time. We do bright green shirts and say caution. Then we have uh, six signs made up saying caution, be patient, volunteers fill in potholes. And we have okay. guy, people walking around way ahead of us. So hopefully people, they do get a little irritated when they block traffic, but we don't really block traffic per se. But So we have a lot of signage going around to do that and then bright shirts and we really you know try to preach to say, you know take your time and look both ways you know but. and you mentioned volunteering a couple seconds ago how do you volunteer how, how could someone sign up to volunteer sure yeah you can call the uh, the number text me or call or email that's going to be uh, uh, listed, but my number is 319-505-3500, and they can text or call, and then mm -hmm. we're, like I say, we won't be just this Saturday, it'll be the next three, sa uh, two Saturdays right. after. Okay, and what do you recommend, because uh, I may wear a suit, uh, but you may <laughs> not recommend that, what should people wear? <laughs> well, that's a good, another good question, is uh, boots and gloves, you would like, mm -hmm. and old clothes, because you do get dirty, and it's, uh, it add off asphalt, well, you know, will ruin your pair of jeans and right, stuff like that. True. So wear something that you know you you know that you're not afraid to get you know a little damaged, if you will. But uh, gloves are important because okay. you, you know. But uh, so and 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 folks will be out there for this Saturday, the following Saturday, and the one after yep, that. Yep. Yep. Weather permitting. I mean, it's pouring down rain or something to be only stopping us okay. or snow. You never know now. We're still in March. All right. <laughs> well, well, you know, um, you know, you you've been a. a, a true community servant um, appreciate that I mean you you serve when my uncle yeah uh, Joe yep. served as well so yep. it, it's absolutely phenomenal yeah. and I want to I want to thank you Scott for taking the time to be with us sure. and to tell us about the civic volunteer effort in your part in its organization and since potholes are created by temperature swings freeze thaw cycles and the amount of snow and rain this year has been a model for how winter weather can have an extensive impact on road deterioration. Yep. Yep. To stay safe and avoid damage to vehicles, drivers need to slow down because potholes are misleading and can be masked with puddles. Please be patient and courteous with the crews, professional or volunteer, and office staff who are striving to maintain the roads during snow and ice events. The city has full-time crews dedicated to patching potholes when the department is not facing emergency situations such as snow, rising water, etc. Uh, but potholes are repaired as soon as crews are aware of their existence. And to report a pothole, please click on, please click on the pothole action icon on the City Street Department website or call the street department at 291-4267. Continuing on, I am an enormous supporter and encourager of youth, especially our local youth. And youth engagement can be defined as meaningful participation and sustained involvement of a young person in an activity with the focus outside of themselves. And Waterloo is blessed to have many, many active community-wide youth. And I think you will be amazed by one example of a very active and energetic young person. Stay tuned. Traveling to Waterloo is easy. Waterloo Regional Airport, served by American Airlines, offers daily service to Chicago O'Hare with connections to over 700 destinations worldwide. At Waterloo Regional Airport, you'll find friendly ticket agents and helpful personnel so you can fly through security. And with close-in vehicle parking at only $5 per day, Waterloo should be your airport of choice. Waterloo Regional Airport and American Airlines, your partners in air service from the Cedar Valley.
There is so much I could say about youth participation in our community. However, I want to get right to our guest, Taylor Hogan, a Columbus High School student that is the ultimate example of the capabilities of our youth. So welcome, Taylor, to Heart for the City, and congratulations on being named the Student of the Year by the Exchange Club of Waterloo. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for having <laughs> me. And my, my wife is a Columbus, Columbus grad, too, so didn't, nice. didn't know that. A little, yes. little history, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what then some activities you're engaged in? Yeah, so at Columbus, I am on the softball, tennis, and diving team, and then I'm also a part of National Honor Society, senior leadership, and student government. So, say tennis, diving, and softball. Yep. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Um, but uh, among the sports that you participate in, I understand that last season you batted over 500. Um, and how did you do as a team? Yeah, so last year we made it to state for the mm -hmm. second year in a row. And actually the first year we made it, we made our school history because no team has done that before, which was pretty awesome. We haven't, we, both years we lost first round at state. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of trying, we're hoping that we could change that this year maybe. And oh, last wow. year we just lost two girls. So I'm excited to see okay. how we do this year. Wow. That is, so do you do any training prior to the season? or are you? We have some off season stuff and okay. I play in the fall a little bit. All right, so you're always actively doing something, right? Yep. And mentors, um, do you have, like, mentors or people that you, you reach out to? Or? For sure. I mean, all of my teachers and coaches mm -hmm. that I see on a daily basis, I really, like, I know that they want what's best mm -hmm. for me and are willing to do anything to help me reach my goals. And, of course, my parents who have been there since Your day mom one. Tour. My mom tour, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, good, good. And and have you had the opportunity to do that, you know, pay it forward a little bit? So, like, playing sports as a kid, I would always look up to the older athletes, you know, and just see kind of what they were doing, especially my sister. She's actually a gymnast at the University of Iowa. Oh, wow. And so I always kind of looked at her worth ethic, ethic mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so I'm hoping my actions – are kind of mentoring the younger athletes. So no gymnastics, no? I do gymnastics oh, also, actually. You didn't include Just, that? Uh, well, outside of Columbus. <laughs> okay. Yep. And um, during the, for the, uh, the exchange club, you wrote an essay. Tell us, tell us the, the, the theme or a little bit about what you've written. So the theme was, how am I a catalyst in my community? Mm -hmm. And in my essay, I mm -hmm. kind of compared it to fireworks a little bit, just because they take a catalyst to become a thing of beauty, something big for everyone. And I think in any project that happens, you need that catalyst to start it, mm -hmm. and it can become something great. All right, I'm about to take that word. That is great. That is great. So what? So uh, being a catalyst, but you're also a catalyst within uh, giving back to the community and community service. Tell us, tell us what you're involved in. So I volunteer coach my little sister's softball teams during the week. And <coughs> is that I, Avery? What's your Avery, okay. yes. Okay. Yep. So I have an older sister and a younger sister. She better than you. Oh uh, well, maybe <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, and also, my cousin has Down syndrome, mm. and so I actually had a unique opportunity to help at Gigi's house, and I kind of helped them with their annual gala and kind of set like putting it together a little bit, and it was a uh, for the fundraiser to support Down syndrome, and then. I've helped at gymnastics meets and a little bit coaching, volunteering there. Right. And then one of the bigger things that I've done is I've organized a 5K for the local honor flight to raise money. Oh, wow, for that. really? Yep. <coughs> That's impressive. You have to invite me. I will. I, is, it, yes. is it a walk and run or is it? Walk, run, yes. Okay, okay. Run or you walk. have to invite me. Um, you also um, have learned a tremendous lot, a, amount from your grandfather, Irvin Webb. Weber, Weber, right? Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that relationship and who he was? Yeah, so my grandpa was a prisoner of the Korean War, mm -hmm. and he passed away when I was eight okay. years so, old. But he was a very humbled man, and three things that kind of, three words that kind of I think of when I think of my grandpa mm -hmm. are family, faith, and freedom, because wow. those were the three things that meant everything to him. And kind of how we got, we got in, I got into veterans. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, my family and I would 
attend POW reunions around the nation. Wow. And we would kind of, we would bring quite a few people there. We were kind of always known as the Weber clan, mm -hmm. which was kind of fun. But going at that age, and, but going at that age, I never really knew how much of an impact it would have on me. Right, right. Like at these reunions, I got to visit with many, many mm -hmm. POWs and just kind of talk to them and just how special those moments really were. And so um, the work with veterans was inspired through your grandfather mm -hmm. and you have the 5K. Can you tell me the name of it again? It was the Stars and Stripes Honor Flight 5K. Stars and Stripes Honor, okay, got it. Yes. <laughs> So um, are there any other veteran activities that you may participate in? Yeah, so my f it's really a family affair with veterans. I mean, I have a aunt on the Honor Flight Committee, and then wow. my cousin actually does craft sales mm -hmm. to fundraise for the Honor Flight. Oh, wow. But I've also um, attended, like, the return trips for the Honor Flight for mm -hmm. the veterans. Right. And I've also written letters <laughs> just thanking them for their service. And then at Columbus, we just started having a Veterans Day assembly mm. and I, I kind of took the lead in that and I was kind of in charge of getting it all together and I just think right. it's really important to like show the students how much right. they gave of themselves and how special they oh, that's all are. incredible. So um, you've done some wonderful things up to your senior year but what happens next? What are the, what is the next chapter? I will be attending the University of Northern Iowa mm -hmm. And right now I plan to major in biology, not okay. sure if that'll change. Right. And I will be on their softball and diving team okay. as wow. well. Wow, really? Well, you know, things can change. Right. Um, I don't know how many majors I had. <laughs> and then I finished all my majors and then I wanted to be mayor. <laughs> but the, the great thing about it is that you're giving yourself opportunities. Um, you're paying it forward. You are listening to wise counsel and to mentors, which I think is extraordinary. So uh, you keep on keep on doing the best you can be. You want to give any shout-outs to anyone? Um, just to the people that support me in everything that I do. I mean, okay. without them, I really wouldn't be here right. today. All right. Well, Taylor, thank you for taking time out of, the, of your very active life to be with us. Uh, I think you'll agree with me that empowering our youth by engaging them in community activities allows them to develop skills needed to make good decisions and solve complex issues. Uh, we refer to our uh, as a youth, uh, and truly you are, but in the process you have shown great effort, dedication, hard work, confidence, and most of all, maturity. And I know you're going places, and do you see Mayor of Waterloo in the future 50 years from now? Oh, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, well, well, we all wish you the best uh, as your future involves. Thank you very much. When youth become engaged in community activities, they develop the skills needed to be an effective leader. And the power of influence decisions at a community or a school level causes to them to rise amongst their peers and to begin to show signs of leadership. Why is this critical? Because they are our future. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Discover your past, present, and future at the Grant Museum District. Explore and play at the Blue Dorn Science Imaginarium. This interactive science center provides fun, hands-on exhibits and live science demonstrations. Visitors can explore more than 90 different exhibits and marvel at the aquariums and enclosures that are home to a variety of amphibians, fish, reptiles, snakes, and arachnids. Enjoy both permanent and temporary exhibits at the Grout Museum of History and Science. Take in a planetarium show and learn all about the history of the Cedar Valley. Marvel at the Victorian elegance of the Snowden House and the Rensselaer Russell House Museum. Visit the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum and take in its traditional and interactive displays. Veteran stories are told throughout the museum's mini theaters, interactive maps, dog tag stations, and more. Visit gmdistrict.org for details, hours, and rates. Looking for something to do? For entertainment, shopping, eating, and more, go to experiencewaterloo.com for a complete listing of so many exciting activities, places, and venues. 
Well, that's our show. We welcome your suggestions and feedback. Remember to tell others that episodes are available for viewing from the City of Waterloo website and at cityofwaterlooiowa.com and search for Heart for the City. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook. Please join us next time and thanks for watching Heart for the City. Until then, I think you will agree, it's a great day to be in Waterloo.